Let's go ahead and jump into your very first simulation. Uh, before we do, let's take a moment to visit the Visual Python website. If you do a Google search for Visual Python, you'll see vPython shows up as one of the first links. It's at vpython.org. Uh, this is an extension of the Python language that allows for relatively complex 3D modeling without a lot of programming experience and programming background. It provides the user with a system that allows for three-dimensional manipulation without you having to write all that code to do that. Uh, we're going to spend a good portion of this course learning about the Python program that uh, vPython is based on uh, and developing the basic skills for using it and the Visual Python libraries. But the purpose of this tutorial is to get your feet wet with both Visual Python and with just basic computational modeling. So don't worry too much about the details uh, of the programming language for now. Uh, we're just going to have fun with a simple program just to get our feet wet. Uh, what I would like you to do is take a moment and pause the video and download uh, the Visual Python that you'll need uh, for your operating system. So you can see it is available for Windows, Macintosh, and Linux. Uh, I'm using a Mac, uh, so it gives me instructions for how to download that uh, for Windows. Uh, there's also instructions on how to download that. Go ahead and take a moment to get your uh, system set up. Once you do, there's a program called vIDLE, v V-I-D-L-E, uh, which you can launch from your computer. And it will just have a text editor that we'll be putting our code into uh, for, uh, for this, this uh, tutorial and uh, running the program from this environment. So go ahead and take a minute to do that. Great. Now for your first simulation, what we're going to do is write a piece of uh, code that models a ball bouncing onto a wooden floor. So I'm going to go ahead and just call up the code. I've already written it. It's relatively short. I just want to run it and show you what that looks like. Uh, this is our vPython window. You can see that it has uh, three-dimensional objects, a sphere, it has a little wooden table there, and the ball just bounces up and down. And it just goes up and down and up and down. And what Visual Python does for you is it allows for this complete three-dimensional environment. So I can grab this, and on my Mac, I am holding down my left mouse button and the option key. Uh, you can look in the documentation for how to do this with other uh, operating systems. This is with the command key and you can see I can rotate it. This is again with my mouse uh, holding down the command key. I can zoom in and out. Uh, so this is a full three-dimensional environment that you can manipulate um, using uh, using the mouse and the keyboard without you having to write any code to do so. So this is one of the reasons why vPython is very powerful for scientific computing is it allows us to very quickly uh, prototype systems to model. Now, because it is a 3D environment, it can be a little bit slow, but Python is a lot faster, and so we can often turn off the visualization to do more complex calculations. But it's fun to be able to see what uh, uh, what's going on in the window here. So we're going to go ahead and start with uh, the basics of how to get that type of program running. We're going to have us uh, work through this uh, together. Um, and this simulation uh, for the bouncing ball really represents one of the most basic types of computational models that you can have. So if we think about what's going on, we are dropping a ball on the ground, gravity is accelerating the ball until it hits the ground, and then the momentum of the ball is transferred to the surface during a collision. Now, since the ground is treated as effectively immovable, that momentum is transferred back to the ball, causing it to reverse direction, and it bounces back up. So the ball moves back up, it decelerates under gravity until it stops, then it reverses direction to fall back down again. In the absence of anything that removes energy from the system, such as air drag or losses during collision, this should happen indefinitely. So let's see if we can make a simple model that does that. First of all, go ahead and launch vPython against by running again by running the program vIDL. That's uh, that's v i d l e. Uh, once you have that in place, you can go up and uh, click on File, New Window, and that gives you a new window here uh, for typing our code. Now we'd like to save this so that we can run it. Um, so we're going to save this file as I'm just going to save this to my desktop as something called first sim.py. Now we put the .py uh, suffix after the or extension onto the file because that tells the computer that this is a Python program and that will allow it to have some nice color syntax in for uh, for editing the file. So I'm going to go ahead and save that as first sim.py. And then in order to access the Visual Python libraries, 
uh, and all these uh, uh, tools that we're going to be using, I need to load those into the program. So I'm just going to type from visual, which is the name is the name of the package, and I'm going to import everything in there. And I can do that by just saying import star. Now once I do that, I can create a ball, and balls in uh, uh, I can represent the ball as uh, one of the primitive objects in vPython, which is a sphere. And that's going to create a sphere and draw it on the screen. So let's go ahead and save that. Um, save that program. And I'm just going to run it and see what we get here. So I run the module and I get this little uh, white ball that has shading because there's a light off to the upper right that's all done for us. You can see that I can zoom in and out. That's something I didn't have to write any code to do. I can also manipulate this thing uh, backwards and forwards. So that's it. That's as simple as it is to create a sphere. And I already have a uh, physical system that I can at least manipulate using my mouse. OK. So what I'd like to do, though, is um, have a little bit more control over how this is drawn. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to my sphere here and I am going to give it a position. So position I can type that as a POS and a POS is represented by a vector which has three quantities. It has its X position, its Y position, and its Z position. But what this is telling me is draw a sphere at a position X of 0. So X is going to be our left to right coordinate the position y of 10 units, and that could be 10 meters, it could be 10 centimeters, 10 inches, whatever you like. Uh, it's just 10 units on the screen. Positive 10 is going to be in the upwards direction, and then 0 is the uh, in and out direction for, uh, for the z-axis. So I'm just going to have this draw ball um, approx uh, 10 units uh, above the 0 point of the center of the screen. Then I can give that ball a radius, so I can say radius is equal to 0.5 and then I'd like to give it a different color so I can give it a color um, and we reference that by saying color is equal to and we say the color dot cyan um, again there's full documentation for this we're going to be going this into detail of what all of our options are but that gives us a sphere with its position set its radius set and its color um, now if we run this again, then we'll see that we've moved the ball so that it's up at the top of the screen and we've changed its color. Again, I can still zoom in and out. I can manipulate all around. All that stuff comes for free. Okay, so now what we'd like to do is add the floor. And I'm going to add the floor by calling it floor. And our floor is basically a giant uh, 3D rectangle, which in vPython is called a box. So I'm going to make a box, and I can just make a box like that. And that's going to draw a random box. Let's see what happens when we do that. It just puts a box right at the center. You can see there it is. But that doesn't look very much like a floor. So let's see if we can add some features that should modify that. Um, so the the box, I want it to be our floor at the bottom of the scene, so or at least near near the bottom of the scene. So I'm going to say give it a position of the center of the box, which is going to be 0, 0.0. And let's just put this like halfway down, minus 5.0, uh, minus meaning 5 units beneath uh, the center of the screen. And then I put 0, 0.0 uh, for the z-axis in and out. And for the size of this thing, I'm going to say the size, and because it's a box, it has three dimensions in its size, I'm going to make it 12 units across, uh, I'm going to make it 0 0.2 units high, and I'm going to make it 12 units uh, across in the z-axis. And then I could give it a color, but since I want it to be a floor, it might be kind of cool to uh, make it look like a floor, so I'm going to use the material keyword, and I'm going to set that as something called materials.wood. And as you can imagine, there's quite a bit of um, cool stuff that that uh, you can set uh, default in vPython, and we'll get into that uh, those details later. So I'm just here checking my uh, parentheses, make sure everything looks good. And again, once I write a line of code, I want to run it and see what it looks like, and I should get my scene that we've seen before. So this is my uh, ball. I'm going to drop it on the floor. 
And again, I've got the full 3D zoom in and out environment. So, you know, take a moment f to appreciate the fact that vPython allows you in two lines of code to make a pretty cool looking uh, three dimensional environment. Okay, so we've run this and we've seen what we've got here. Uh, we've got our ball, we've got our floor, and now we want to make it do something. Now in order for it to do something, we have to give some properties to the things that we want to move that will make them move. And we've already given them positions, uh, but if we want the ball to move, it needs to have some sort of velocity, some speed and direction that takes it uh, forward or backward. So I'm going to go ahead and make something called uh, the velocity. and We'll get into the object-oriented aspect of this later, but what I'm doing here is I'm taking my ball and giving it an attribute called velocity. So I'm going to set its velocity equal to a vector, and initially the velocity is zero in all dimensions because I'm just dropping it from rest. So I'm just dropping the ball, um, and then we need to do something with that. Now what's what are we going to do to it? We are going to have it uh, accelerate due to the force of gravity. So I'm going to create a variable called acceleration due to gravity and I'm going to set that also to a vector but in our case here it is only moving it only has an acceleration in the negative y direction of 9.8 meters per second squared and of course that sets the units for this clearly I'm using meters everywhere I'm using seconds and I'm using accelerations in meters per second squared Okay, so quickly I'm just going to run this again, make sure I didn't make any mistakes. And what I should see is no errors and I still have my scene. So it looks like everything I've done looks good. Uh, now we need to make this do something. Uh, something has to happen to the ball. So in order for something to happen, we have to have time elapse. And so I'm going to make a, a small time step and I'm going to call it time step. We're going to set this equal to something pretty small, 0 0.0001 seconds. Uh, and we'll see why we have to make that so small as we go forward here. But this is basically the amount of time that's going to elapse every time we ask the ball to accelerate. Um, then what I'm going to do is make a loop called a while loop. And this while loop is going to basically just continue to advance the position and velocity of the ball until it uh, until we decided to stop and I don't ever want this to stop so I'm just gonna say that while true which means do this forever uh, until I cancel it um, we're going to set the ball velocity equal to the balls old velocity plus this acceleration due to gravity times the time step. So what is this saying here? This is saying that I take my acceleration, which is in meters per second squared, I multiply it by seconds, that gives me a change in velocity, I then add that to the original velocity, and that's going to give me the new velocity. So as I drop the ball, the very you know thousandth of a second later, it's going to have a slightly higher velocity because it's accelerating downward. Once I have the velocity, uh, computed, I can change the position as well. So I'm going to say ball.pos is equal to the old ball.pos plus whatever the new velocity is, whoops, whatever the new velocity is times the time step. So you can see a similar construction here. I've got the old velocity, which is in meters per second. I multiply that by seconds. That gives me a change in position in meters. I, I add that to the original position, and I get uh, the new position. And then the other thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to add this in here. Um, this is something that we'll go into detail later, but to control the speed of the simulation so that it looks pretty good on most machines, I'm going to just set the frequency of the updating of the screen with this rate parentheses 5,000. So we're going to come back to why we do this later, but that just makes it so that the screen will refresh uh, and we should all get similar results. One thing I want to point out here in Python is that uh, while you're typing this, make sure that you get the tabs correct for uh, the while loops. So when I set a while loop and then I go to the next line, you'll notice I tabbed in all of these lines so that they all line up. So if I go over here and hit tab, 
they should all line up. That tells vPython that we're in this loop, so we want to make sure that those are all on the same, uh, the same indent. Okay, now if you run that, let's see what happens. So we run that, and my ball is moving, and it's falling down, and then it passes through the floor and continues to go on indefinitely. So we've got half of the physics right. We've got acceleration due to gravity working. It's dropping the ball, but it passes through the floor as if the floor doesn't exist. So we need our second bit of physics here, which is going to tell us how to update the ball when it impacts the floor. So before we decide to update the velocity, I need to do a check and ask myself when and if we are hitting the floor. So we're going to use that with an if statement. So I'm going to say if the ball position, the y position of the ball, is less than the floor position, its y component. And I'm going to add 0.2 because the ball has a radius, and I don't want it to halfway go through the floor. Uh, so this is saying that if the y position of the ball is greater than, or sorry, I should, that should say less than, is less than that, so we're saying we're in, currently impacting the ball, then I want to conserve momentum by reversing the velocity. And I'll just reverse it by making it negative. Okay, so again, what this is saying is that if the y position of the ball gets within this... Uh, tolerance of the y position of the floor, we're going to have the ball bounce. So this is a, an example of collision physics that we're putting in here to make this uh, make this have some physically realistic results. Okay, so now that I have that, I can run it. And when I do, I should see, oh, it bounces. Check that out. It should go back up to the same height, falls back down, and it should bounce again. Oop back to the beginning, and it should keep doing that indefinitely. So there we have our first physical simulation. Now this does seem like probably a little bit of work uh, to get a, uh, a ball bouncing on a wooden surface, but think for a minute about what we have uh, in place here. Uh, we have um, a physically realistic system which is modeling the object's reaction to forces and collisions with another object. So in any physical system, what we do is we start by defining the object in the system we want to model. In this example, we created a ball and a floor and gave them values for position and velocity and acceleration. We then define the physical events, what we generally think of as forces. Here we had a floor reversing the velocity of the ball and impact, and we had gravity reacting to the ball, the ball reacting to gravity. And then we have a, an algorithm that updates the position and time of the of, of the the position and velocity as a function of time based on those forces and the acceleration. And that's it. So with just a few lines of code, uh, we have a physically realistic, albeit simple, uh, physical system that we're modeling. Now you can go ahead and play around with this a little bit and ask yourself what happens if you make the time step bigger or smaller. Uh, what happens if you change the acceleration due to gravity or if you change the conditions of the collisions? Um, you can also have some fun with it, change the color of the ball, change the surface materials. Uh, you can check out the documentation on vPython to see what all the options are for that. But again, the rest of the class is studying uh, how to do that. So uh, take a little bit of time to uh, play with this. In the next lesson, we're going to review some basic physics concepts that we're going to need for the course. But for now, just kick back and realize you've made your first computational physics module, and you should be pretty happy with yourself. Congratulations. See you in the next lesson.